You're listening to NALC's You Are the Current Resident podcast. I'm Brian Renfro, NALC Executive Vice President, and this is your podcast for Wednesday, May 13th. We'll start today's podcast by going to NALC President Fred Rolando for an audio version of his May 13th statement to NALC members. Here is NALC President Fred Rolando. Good afternoon. This is President Fred Rolando. Today is May 13th, 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to have wide-ranging impacts on every aspect of our lives. The way we now live, work, purchase goods and services, and communicate with each other has changed drastically. The ongoing crisis has disrupted businesses, both large and small, some of which may never recover. While postal employees are essential workers, vital to the American public and economy and still working each day, the Postal Service, too, has been hit hard by this pandemic. As letter carriers know, the conversation about Postal Service finances is nothing new. Unfortunately, this pandemic continues to cripple the economy, resulting in sharp declines in letter mail volume for the Postal Service. It currently projects that it will exhaust its cash on hand by the end of September if Congress and the White House fail to intervene. On May 1st, North Star Opinion Research and Heart Research Associates, leading Republican and Democratic public opinion firms, released the findings of a national poll commissioned by the NELC regarding the continued operation and funding of the U.S. Postal Service during this pandemic. Unsurprisingly, The results of the poll show overwhelming bipartisan support for the Postal Service, with 94 percent of all registered voters saying mail and package service is important to them. In addition, 95 percent of the registered voters that were polled said receiving by mail official government recommendations, supplies, medications and test kits related to COVID-19 is important to them during this crisis. While those results are no surprise given the Postal Service's popularity, when respondents were asked whether they would favor or oppose appropriating funds for the Postal Service to maintain operations through the virus in the next round of financial relief legislation, 92% of voters said that they would favor this move. Additionally, 78% of voters prefer federal funding over increasing parcel rates, and 70% prefer direct funding over government loans. The poll results clearly show that the American public overwhelmingly supports the direct appropriation of funds for the Postal Service during this pandemic. NELC will continue to work with Congress and the White House to stabilize the agency in the next stimulus package so that the Postal Service can continue to serve the needs of 160 million households and businesses every day. Yesterday, a new coronavirus aid package was released by House Democrats that includes $25 billion in direct funding to the Postal Service. The bill would also repeal restrictions on a $10 billion line of credit that was authorized in a previous stimulus package. There is also a hazard pay provision that would include postal employees. Certain members of the Senate and the administration will likely resist many of the provisions of the package once the negotiations for a final bill begin. Letter carriers should continue contacting their senators to urge support for funding in the next stimulus package. Let your senators know how important the Postal Service is to the American public and that funding is necessary to replace lost revenue from declining letter volume related to the pandemic and for COVID-19 related expenses. For more information on how to take action and to view the results of our bipartisan poll, please visit the Government Affairs page on the NELC website. On May 6, the U.S. Postal Service Board of Governors announced the selection of Louis DeJoy to serve as the next Postmaster General, succeeding current PMG Megan Brennan. PMG Brennan announced her intent to resign back in October 2019, but remained in her role while the search for a new PMG continued. Mr. DeJoy is expected to begin serving in his new role effective June 15th. He is the first PMG in over 20 years to not rise through the ranks of the Postal Service. 
He is currently president of LDJ Global Strategies, a real estate development, private equity, and consulting company based in Greensboro. He also serves as the lead fundraiser for the Republican National Convention. Prior to that, he spent over 30 years as a very successful CEO in the logistics field. On May 7th, I congratulated Louis DeJoy on his appointment as the 75th Postmaster General. And I say again, the National Association of Letter Carriers is committed to working in good faith with him to build a relationship based on mutual trust and a shared vision for the future of the Postal Service. This shared vision should embrace a strategy to grow as a public institution that values its employees and that works with its unions to promote high quality service, safety, efficiency, and a workplace culture of mutual respect. I look forward to seeing whether his agenda is indeed consistent with this vision. The selection of the new PMG followed the unexpected resignation of Board of Governors Vice Chairman David Williams on April 30th. It is reported that Governor Williams resigned in protest over the Treasury Department's inappropriate meddling in the management of the Postal Service. We had recently written to the board members, urging them to resist such meddling, and I asked the same of the new Postmaster General. Our letter noted that, quote, it is the role of a democratically elected Congress to set postal policy in this country, and it is the role of the board and the PRC to implement that policy with the managerial and regulatory discretion provided by law. The Treasury Department has no authority to rewrite the law or to impose its policy preferences on the Postal Service or on the country, end of quote. Keeping politics out of the Postal Service and maintaining its independence is central to its success. This is one of the reasons that over 90 percent of all Americans from both parties and from rural and urban areas alike support the Postal Service. In my statement on April 3rd, 2020, I reported on the possibility of our interest arbitration hearings for a new collective bargaining agreement being delayed due to the pandemic. Neutral arbitrator Dennis Nolan has now provided sufficient hearing dates for September through November to replace the previously scheduled dates in May, June, and July. There continue to be major issues at stake as we still have many unresolved differences regarding economic, operational, and workplace issues. Our collective bargaining goals have not changed. While we continue discussions with the Postal Service, we are also continuing to prepare for arbitration to achieve those goals. Our current collective bargaining agreement remains in full force pending final resolution of the party's dispute. Last month, I also reported that the NELC Executive Council was doing its due diligence to explore our options in the event we would be unable to hold our national convention as scheduled August 17th through the 21st. At the direction of the Executive Council, we have notified the convention center, hotels, and various vendors of our decision to cancel the convention. Unfortunately, the state government of Hawaii could not give us any assurance that travel or gatherings with the number of delegates we would have had attending would be allowed in August. Please see the NELC website for information regarding cancellation of hotels and travel reservations. At this point in time, we will continue to monitor the effects of the pandemic and then consider the available options for scheduling the convention in the future. In March, as a result of the inability to social distance during route counts and inspections, the Postal Service agreed with NELC to instruct its field representatives to temporarily halt route inspections until further notice. After continued negotiations, later in April, the Postal Service further notified the area offices that all route inspections scheduled for the rest of the spring would be canceled. This includes refraining from conducting any PS Forms 3999, PS Forms 1838C, and special route inspections. 
Additionally, the Postal Service has now also agreed that any pending implementation of previous route adjustments would not take place until at least June 6th. Since Handbook M39 also states that June, July, August, and December are to be excluded from any route counts and inspections, there should be no route inspections until at least September. Letter carriers who are subjected to counts and inspections in contradiction to these policies should immediately inform their local union representatives, who in turn, without delay, should inform their national business agent. Currently in Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, Dallas, and Greenwood, South Carolina, the Postal Service is testing the use of various types of materials and styles to be used as face coverings during the hotter months. Such styles being tested include various bandana type masks, neck gaiters, and even cooling masks. While we don't yet have the final data from the tests, Initial results indicate that the carriers like three of the five styles tested, two of which were the neck gaiter style and the other being a bandana style. The Postal Service said they will be ordering the selected styles. Recently, in certain New York City and New Jersey zip codes, COVID-19 sample test kits began being mailed through the Postal Service as part of a limited research study being conducted by the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, working in conjunction with Rutgers University. Such test kits are being supplied to 4,000 targeted recipients to be tested for COVID-19. A mandatory stand-up talk regarding the tests should have been given in the offices where these mailings are taking place. The kits are mailed daily to one to 200 select volunteer recipients from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. The volunteers then self-administer the test and return the sample through the mail to either the Icon School of Medicine or Rutgers University in Brunswick, New Jersey for testing. Each test kit contains explicit mailing instructions for the test recipients to follow to ensure the safety of individuals handling the return samples. Letter carriers can get more information or clarification about these mailings from their supervisors. If you're unable to get information or clarification from your supervisor, please contact your local union representative, your national business agent, or email NELC headquarters at COVID-19 at NELC.org. As the pandemic persists, we continue to discuss with the Postal Service potential new temporary policies and procedures to protect our members, other postal employees, and our customers. One such policy being discussed involves taking the temperature of employees when reporting to work. The Postal Service will soon begin proof of concept testing in a few sites. What this means is that they will be testing whether the equipment they bought actually works so we can then discuss the feasibility of how and where such a system would be used. We are in the process of discussing the relevant policies and procedures that would be followed should the system be implemented in selected sites. The test will involve taking the temperatures of employees on a voluntary basis as they enter the workplace each day. They will test this outside, inside, and even a drive-by method. There will be four proof of concept test sites likely beginning next week. Merrifield, Virginia, PNDC, Falls Church, Virginia, Carrier Annex, Fairfax, Virginia, Main Office, and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, PNDC. The test will run for two weeks. Having your temperature taken is voluntary, taken with a camera or scanner from a distance, and no health data will be collected or maintained. During the two-week test, if an employee has a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, they will be so informed in private and then sent home and paid either Families First emergency sick leave or administrative leave until the fever subsides. This week, we also began discussions with the Postal Service regarding making test kits available for employees to be tested at work sites. Several options and possibilities are being explored, and the relevant policies and procedures associated with such testing are being discussed. 
Also this week, we will be discussing renewal of the many COVID-19 related memorandums of understanding that we have negotiated with the Postal Service during the last eight weeks. As always, information will be posted on the NALC website. Today, some 5,000 employees are under quarantine from the virus. Over 12,000 previously quarantined employees have been cleared and returned to work. About 900 of the currently quarantined employees have tested positive for the virus, and another 500 are presumed to be positive. Another 1,000 employees who tested positive in the past have recovered and returned to work. Of all these numbers, about one-third are letter carriers. Sadly, 60 employees have passed away from the virus, including 14 city letter carriers. Daily, I see depictions of letter carriers as heroes, watch guards of society working diligently to serve the citizens of the United States, their customers. It's true, you are all heroes, and I, along with the other NELC officers and employees, remain ever so proud to be working for you. Thank you for all that you do. Please stay safe. God bless each of you and your families. That was NALC President Fred Rolando with the audio version of his May 13th statement to NALC members. I want to thank all of our members that have taken advantage of the Action Center that was created on our website uh, at NALC.org uh, to give you a, an easy way to contact your senators or your members of Congress to encourage them to support the financial relief that the Postal Service needs in the next round of stimulus legislation. Right now, the House of Representatives has introduced a bill that includes uh, much of what we need that that would really do the trick, so to speak, if we were to get this legislation passed to get us through the, the effects of this pandemic. That said, there's a long way to go. There's still Uh, Ultimately, we expect passage of that bill in the House of Representatives, but it remains to be seen um, how this will work on the Senate side. Um, But in the meantime, uh, again, I thank those of you that have taken advantage of that opportunity. We've had, uh, I believe, over 100,000 contacts now, so that's excellent that so many of our members, uh, as you always do, have taken advantage of that opportunity. I encourage you, if you've already done that, to maybe focus your time and energy on encouraging other members that maybe haven't taken that step, your your friends and brothers and sisters that you work with, and, and ask them to do the same thing. It's really easy. Just go to NALC.org. You'll see across the scrolling slider banner at the top. It'll be the first thing you see. Click that link, and, and it'll take you just a couple of minutes there to enter some information that you'll know off the top of your head and be able to send that communication. The more of us they hear from, um, the louder our voice is. Um, one question that's come up is, is what if our friends and family or, or others want to do the same thing? Do we have a way for them to do that? We will have very soon. Um, we will not have a way through our NALC website. Uh, that tool is designed just for our members to use. But in part of our um, campaign and st- overall strategy of of educating and, and influencing members of Congress of both parties, as well as the White House, um, to to include the financial relief that we need. A, a website has been created that is heroesdelivering.com. That's heroesdelivering.com. And the purpose of this website is to be a public place where any American can go and read about the information that's important about the Postal Service. And very soon, probably by this weekend sometime, there will be a similar action center there that will allow them to contact their senators and their members of Congress and and encourage them to also support it. So um, once that's up and and going, we'll, through this form of communication with you on this podcast and, and our other forms of communication, be sure that you know that it's up and ready and and you can encourage your friends and family to take advantage of that. Um, As always, we love to hear from you. So we we appreciate any feedback that you give us or or questions or comments. You can contact us uh, by email at social at NALC.org. Social media, you can always um, tweet us 
post on Facebook, um, Instagram. We ask if you do that, use the hashtag Y-A-T-C-R-P-O-D. That's hashtag Y-A-T-C-R-P-O-D. Please follow us on social media. On Twitter, we're at NALC underscore national. On Instagram, at Letter Carriers. On Facebook, at NALC dot national. We have a YouTube page called The Postal Record. And obviously, anything that you need to know about your job or your union is available at our website at NALC.org. Well, thanks once again for listening. And I know I've said this on this podcast before, but it's it's worth repeating every time I get the opportunity to talk to you is um, the, the work that all letter carriers are doing every day is admirable. And you're all heroes. And, and you hear that while you're out on your route and, and the country is, I think, really starting to take notice at, at the best time on, on a wide scale. Um, and that's a lot of what this website's about, Heroes Delivering, is, is educating the public as well as our members of Congress on that fact. So until next time, thanks again for listening. Please stay safe.